Stay on point, Donald. Stay on point. No sidetracks, Donald. Nice and easy. Nice. His campaign probably put that in the teleprompter. Stay on point, Donald. Stay on point. In these final days of the campaign, Donald Trump giving himself a pep talk and Hillary Clinton making fun of it. And it's time now for our Sunday group. GOP strategist Carl Rove, Bob Woodward of the Washington Post, Dana Perino, co-host of The Five, and I'll tell you what, and the hardest working woman in show business is also the author of the new book, Let Me Tell You About Jasper, and Fox News political analyst, Juan Williams. Well, Carl, you've looked at all the polls, you've crunched the numbers on early voting, you've explored all the paths to 270. Where is this race now? Uh, Donald Trump leads in the Mitt Romney states with 206 electoral college votes, albeit in one of those states, North Carolina, by only a point. But he also leads in Ohio, Nevada, New Hampshire, and Iowa. If he gets there, it's 240 electoral votes, still short of the 270, but within striking distance. 29 electoral votes up in Florida. Today, she leads by one, but Republicans have had good numbers in early voting there. They're down only 7,000 in the early voting. Four years ago, when Barack Obama won the state by 74,000, they were down 104,000 at the end of, of early voting. So Florida is very much up for grabs. I thought it was interesting that when uh, you asked Joel Berenson, uh, Benenson. Benenson about the most important states, he said Pennsylvania, not Florida. That seems to me that that might be an indication that they're concerned about Florida. It is very much up for grabs, and the signal in the early voting points to a narrow uh, Trump victory there. Uh, Juan, what's your sense? Is Trump as close as Carl says? Is this race slipping away for Clinton? I don't know if it's slipping away, but I think that if you looked a week ago, it was more like five to six percentage point in the national polls this morning. Wall Street Journal has her up four. ABC Washington Post has her five. Fox News Channel, our polling has her up two. So what you see is that it has tightened. But most of the tightening has been a result of Republican consolidation of their vote. Republicans previously were about 70%, 75, 80%. Now they're up to 85% behind Donald Trump. I think obviously people like Paul Ryan, the speaker, Ted Cruz, his former rival and bitter rival, have now decided they're voting for Donald Trump. I think that's a signal, despite you know their concern about lack of qualifications, character, whatever. So at the moment, you have it like, you know, she is in a position where most Americans, according to the Fox poll, think she's going to win 56 percent. Only a third, 35 percent, think he'll win. And the difference at this juncture, I think, is ground game. She really has a ground game. I don't think anybody thinks he has a sufficient ground game <clears throat> to push the numbers one or two points at the very end. I want to turn to one of the biggest developments over these last 10 days, and that was FBI Director Comey's shocking announcement that he's reopening the criminal investigation into Hillary Clinton and the emails. Now, the White House said that President Obama wasn't going to weigh in on whether this was a good idea or not, and then President Obama did weigh in. Here he is. I do think that there is a norm that you know, when there are investigations, we don't operate on innuendo. We don't operate on incomplete information. We don't operate on leaks. Bob Woodward, as someone who has been reporting on the FBI since Watergate, what do you think of the role that the FBI and the Justice Department and apparently a lot of leaks and a kind of a war between the two agencies of their role this last 10 days? Uh, I, I think it will be many months or years before we really unravel what happened in this. But what Director Comey did is extraordinary both times, back in July saying that she would not be charged. Uh, an old FBI hand, one of the iconic figures, uh, told me the other day he thinks that's the first time the FBI made a prosecutorial decision. Uh, normally, it's the Justice Department uh, that does this. So it, it, it's, it's a big deal. I don't know whether it uh, changes the race. I mean, the number, uh, numbers that Carl ha has are, are pretty convincing. I, I think the question to kind of ask is, if Trump does win, how, how is that possible? What's been missed? And I think uh, I find in travels around the country, talking to groups from Texas to Florida to New York, people don't trust the polls. 
and they look at voting as much more personal. They don't like the idea, oh, I'm in a demographic group, so I'm going to go uh, this way. They want to decide themselves, and so there are people in uh, demographic groups who will say, no, I'm not going with my group. So you think they're lying? I, I think I mean, uh, lying to is real. So why are people hedging? Uh, because they're unsure, aren't they? Let me bring in Dana and your thoughts. Uh, one, about the state of the race, and two, the FBI role. What do you think of it? And do you think it has hurt, whether you like it or not? Do you think it has hurt Clinton? Well, it, I think that it reaffirmed pre existing beliefs about Hillary Clinton. So if you weren't going to vote for her and you thought she was dishonest, that reaffirmed it. And you might even be more encouraged to vote for it. And I think that it, that has happened at the same time as Juan was saying, the Republicans said, all right, we might not think this is the best candidate we could have had, but by gosh, we're going to go out and vote for him because that's what Republicans do. Um, on the other side, I, I agree with Bob. I think it could take years to find out what happened at the FBI. But whoever wins the presidency has got to figure out a way to reassure Americans and restore confidence in the FBI. Because while they're doing this, they also have said in the past year, James Comey, the director, said they have 50 states that they're looking at with open investigations with ISIS terrorist related things. So they have things to do. Um, I think that two things might happen. Um, Republicans have been trying to get Pennsylvania for a long time, and it's always the one that got away. Right. Wisconsin's in that category as well. That's right. And for Democrats, I think that they still believe that Georgia and Arizona are the two, and I think they're actually probably going to end up with Republicans not winning in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Democrats not winning in Georgia or Arizona. Carl, I got about a minute left in this segment, and I want to go back to the, the narrative this weekend, and that is that the Hispanic vote is coming out in unusually large numbers, and the assumption is because of Trump's very polarizing remarks since his announcement that they're voting against him and for Hillary Clinton and could be the deciding factor. Yeah, that's half the important narrative. What we're also seeing is a decline in the African-American turnout. We're seeing it, for example, in Florida and North Carolina, where it is down. The, uh, the African-American turnout down in those states, uh, Hispanic turnout up. The, the problem for the Democrats is every time they lose 1% of Democratic turnout among African-Americans, they lose about nine-tenths of a point of support because they vote 90% plus for Democrats. Every time they gain a percentage point among Hispanics, they gain about seven-tenths of a percentage. So for Democrats, they're hoping Hispanic turnout is rising significantly more than, than Democratic turnout is dropping among African Americans. Let me make one more point. Pennsylvania, there have been 42 polls since October of 2015. Donald Trump has not led in a single one. 16 polls since uh, the end of September in Colorado, not led in a single one. Michigan, 37 polls since October of last year, hasn't led in a single one. He got an uphill climb here at the end. I can see him getting to 240, but after that, it's going to be a tough slot. And, and let me tell you, he speaks as somebody who, who tried for Pennsylvania over and over. It broke my heart twice. <laughs> broke my heart twice.